my name's Karen O'Connor and you're listening to Menopause, Marriage and Motherhood, the podcast that looks at all aspects of women's lives from hormones and health to relationships, finance and social justice issues. You can connect with me on social media at at karen.mmn. If you enjoy this podcast or podcast in general, and you've been wondering whether you should start your own podcast, head on over to speakuppodcasting.com to find out just how easy and cheap it is to start podcasting. Now let's get right into it. Hello and welcome. I'm here today with Rachel Fryman. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to chatting with you today. So am I. So you're an author and you're, you've got your own podcast too, which is pretty amazing. But one of the things like your passion seems to be talking to women, and I'm just summarizing here, getting people to understand that diets don't work and that there is actually a neuroscience behind dieting. And that thing fascinated me. I was like, huh, ah, is there really? And that the dieting roller coaster doesn't work. And I was reading as well that you like to eat a lot, which we don't generally associate dieting with eating lots. We associate dieting with eating as little as possible <laughs> and only of certain foods. That was a long-winded introduction, but talk to me about your background and what it is you're passionate about. Put it in your words. Yeah, absolutely. So my, I'll start with my background, and then I'll, when I tell you what I'm passionate about, you'll see that the two seemingly do not line up. My background is actually in music. I was a freelance jazz musician in New York City for most of my life, and if anyone's watching the video, your reaction is what I normally get to that. What? That has nothing to do with what you do now. So I, I did music my entire life and eventually I went on to teach music. I wanted a more stable lifestyle than being a crazy jazz musician. So when I was a teacher, I became a middle school music teacher. And if you've ever taught kids or been around a child in your life, it's very rewarding work, but it is very giving. You need to show up as your best self. You need to stay in your center. So I needed some kind of release for myself because it was 12 hour days of taking deep breaths and staying patient and staying aligned. So I started to get into the gym and nutrition just for my own health, just as my own way of keeping my energy up. And it became one of those things like most of us have experienced that the more I learned, the more confused I got because suddenly I was reading things like, Low carb diets are the only way to lose weight, but you need carbs for energy, right? You shouldn't eat fat, but your body needs fat. And if you Google one thing, you get a hundred different answers. So the teacher in me was like, this cannot be accurate. There needs to be a simpler way to do this, right? I believe you can teach anyone anything. That is the educator side of me. And I was just flabbergasted that this is a multi-billion dollar industry filled with BS, filled with really good marketing around things that don't really work. So the more I learned on my own, I got to this breaking point of, wait a second, I thought I was gonna teach forever. I love what I do for a living. I love kids, I love music, but there is this huge gap in the nutrition world, specifically in the health and fitness world of the world does not need another personal trainer, the world does not need another diet system. But what it does need is someone in this field as an educator teaching people that restriction is literally fighting against your human nature, teaching someone that nutrition is a skill, just like you can learn to knit or sew, you can learn the skill of nutrition. And once you know the skill, you'll literally never go on a diet again. And finally, teaching someone the neuroscience of habits, that it's not hoping and praying that this works for me. It's how do I consciously wire my brain for these habits that last? So all of those powers combined led me to this breaking point of, you know what, I, I love teaching. And now I'm going to go be an educator in this field of health and fitness. And here we are five and a half years later. <laughs> That's hilarious. So tell me what you found out. So the neuroscience of diets, that's about wiring our brains to uh, crave different foods or require different foods. What is that all about? Yeah. So when it comes to, to nutrition or health in general, there's kind of two parts to it. There's the biology part. And then there's the psychology slash neuroscience. In fact, the name of my company, Mind Strong Fitness, comes from those two components. Mind Strong being the education piece and the neuroscience, the, the psychology piece to this. 
So when we talk about nutrition, there's a truth of the human body that every human's body is designed to run on a balance of carbs, fat, protein. Carbs don't make us fat. Fat doesn't make us fat. Protein doesn't make us fat. Where we start suffering from weight gain is when we start eating too much or too little of one. If we're putting our body in starvation mode or if we're wildly overeating. But the basis of what we teach, the reason that I can say with confidence this works for everyone is because it is human biology 101. When you learn to fuel your body with the right combination of carbs, fat, protein, you will hit your weight loss goals. Now, with that, there are other components, right? If I could just hand you the keys to the kingdom and say, eat this much, you'll be golden, everyone would do it. But the problem is when we understand from a neuroscience perspective how our brains work, these are literal wirings. If I were to go walk in an overgrown field over and over again, I'm going to create a path. If I put cement down, I'm going to create a road. Our brain's been doing this for decades. So if you've spent 20, 30 years telling yourself carbs are evil, I have no willpower. I always lose 20 pounds, but then I gain back 30. These are literal belief systems that are wired into our brain. So what our job becomes is twofold. Number one, I need to teach you the logistics of nutrition as a skill, how to fuel your body the way it's designed to be fueled. And while we're doing that, we have to consciously unwire these belief systems that no longer serve us and consciously wire in new habits, understanding I can have a donut and I'm not ruining my weight loss goals, understanding there's more nutritious and less nutritious foods, but there's no such thing as good or bad or allowed or not allowed. So it's this twofold practice of understanding the biology behind it and also understanding the psychology and neuroscience of habits as we do that work. Talk to me about the biology of it, because particularly we as women, our metabolism and requirements and everything change every month as we go through our cycle. And then as we go through our lifetimes, it changes again. So perimenopausal, postmenopausal, it all changes. All the requirements change. And, and one of the things I've struggled with, and, and I've spoken to a few people about this, is the changes in exercise requirements and the, the kinds of exercise that benefits us as we go through those changes, as we go through those transitions. But the food's the same, isn't it? Because I, I used to be a swimmer and a runner, so I was the carbohydrate queen and I needed that because I was doing all this high intensity cardio work. But then as I got older, I was like, oh, don't feel so good eating all those carbs anymore. <laughs> It was really fascinating. Talk to me about that side of things. Yeah, absolutely. So I like to separate nutrition from exercise because the reality is nutrition is 90% of this game. When people come to us and they say, I know I should get healthy. I know I should do this. I should do this, but it's overwhelming. My answer is we always start with nutrition because number one, it's 90% of the game. You will hit your goals with nutrition alone. Number two, as humans, we are designed, Freud discovered a principle called the pleasure principle. We are designed to seek pleasure. So if we get our nutrition in check and we start to notice our energy increase and we're starting to feel better, we're not going to sit there and say, wow, I feel incredible. Let me not do anything else. We're going to say, wow, I feel incredible. What else can I do? And then we can start adding workouts on. So I'm going to address your question in, in two answers. I'm going to start nutrition, then go to workouts. It is very true that our bodies change as we get older, right? There is no denying that they are designed that way. I think a lot of times, especially as women, we fight it. We push back. We don't want to accept it, but it's how human beings are designed. Things are supposed to change as we get older. The thing that's a bit shocking though, for a lot of people is that the reason it changes is not the reason that a lot of us think. There is a, a misconception that as we get older, our metabolism is just a death sentence, that it slows down and there's nothing we can do about it. But the reality is that science shows that from 20 to 60, not 40 as most of us think, but 20 to 60, our metabolism doesn't really change very much. And from 60 on, it does slow down a little bit, but we're talking about 1% a year. Now I tell that to some women and it makes them angry because they're like, are you calling me crazy? I'm telling you my body's changing. <laughs> and the answer is it absolutely does change. But the reason it does is if we think about this logically, our bodies need to trust us, right? Our bodies need to, they run off calories, which are our fuel. So at the age of 20, even if we've been on a few diets, we've maybe created some ripples in the waves, right? There hasn't been a lot of yo dieting. By the age of 50, 
we have probably put our body through the ringer. We've cut out carbs. We've binged on carbs. We've gone on low fat diets. We've gone on high fat diets and our body doesn't know which way is up anymore. So the real reason that we start to feel these effects of why is my metabolism slowing down? Why are things changing? It's not because it's a death sentence. It's because our body doesn't trust us anymore. So the beautiful news is whether you're pre-menopausal, post-menopausal, we can absolutely fire up your metabolism through nutrition alone. And the way we do that is by fueling it in that proper proportion and giving it the consistency that it wants. We've had so many women come to us who are in the thick of menopause. They're like, Rachel, I'm eating 900 calories a day and I'm not losing weight. And the answer is, yeah, you've trained your metabolism to go on vacation. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly give it more food and we're going to teach it. Listen, you have a job to do. It's time to wake up and we're going to get your metabolism fired up. And that, work, that, ha- that works at any age, 20, 40, 60, 80 onward. The workout piece I find so fascinating because there's a statistic that says the number one indicator of life longevity is how much lean muscle mass is on your body. And I think that's shocking. You would think it would be something about heart disease or genetics, but it's not. It's how much lean muscle mass you have in your body determines how long you're going to live. Now, we all know as we get older, right, our bones get more frail, our muscles get more frail. So when we combine the fact that things are going to naturally regress a bit and that the number one indicator of our lifespan is lean muscle mass, the time for getting into resistance training, meaning lifting a little bit of heavy weight, becomes more and more important as women age. Now, the added bonus to this though, is that not only does lean muscle mass tell us how long you're gonna live, it's also a key ingredient in firing up your metabolism. So if you're at that menopausal age and you're like, I just feel stuck, I feel like my metabolism is shot to heck, like nothing's working. Number one, we can fire it up with nutrition alone. But number two, when you start learning how to do resistance training, and I'm not talking about bench pressing your body weight, right? We don't have to get, we're not going to become professional power lifters. We're not going to be on the cover of muscle magazines. We're talking about pushing our muscles to do what they can't yet do a little bit. When you start adding that piece in, not only now are we adding that lean muscle mass that helps you live longer, but additionally, we're going to fire up your metabolism even more because it is a truth of the human body that the more lean muscle mass you have, the more your metabolism fires up. In addition, our main focus is on nutrition because it's 90% of this. And then we start to dip our toe into the world of resistance training. And that's just the double whammy of firing up metabolisms and living a longer, healthier life. So in terms of the nutrition, talk to me about the because you briefly did an overview of the nutrition side of things. What are the problems that you see that are inherent in these low carb, low fat, low sugar, low whatever diets? Talk to me about that side of things. Yeah. So I'm a big believer to me, a diet didn't work unless it's a lifestyle, right? When people come to me and say, I'm going to go on keto for the third time because it worked the first two times. I'm like, did it work if we're back here because we lost 20 pounds, but we gained back 30? Did that work? The thing that we need to understand, this is an exercise that we do with everyone day one. I call it wiping the slate clean. If you were to make a list of every single diet you've ever tried in your life, right? For some people that's 50, for some it's 100, for some it's 150 diets plus. If we were to look at the common theme of every single traditional diet, we would see that the common theme is restriction, right? It's don't eat carbs. It's only drink these shakes. It's only eat these pre-approved point systems. And when we understand a little bit of human psychology, I'm going to go back. I mentioned Freud before and the pleasure principle. The pleasure principle states that as humans, we're talking about human nature, you, me, every human with a heartbeat and a pulse, we are designed to avoid pain and seek pleasure. But first and foremost, we are designed to avoid pain and trying to live in a state of restriction, trying to tell yourself, I can't eat this. This is not allowed. This is a bad food. This food's off limits. When we try to put horse blinders on and say, I can't, I can't, we are setting ourselves up to self-sabotage because we are literally fighting against our human nature. And number two, it's not necessary. As we said a few minutes ago, carbs don't inherently make you fat. Fat doesn't inherently make you fat. When we gain weight is when we're eating outside of the boundaries of which our personal body was designed. So when we understand those two truths, number one, that restriction is never going to last, And number two, that carbs, fat, and protein are necessary. They're how our body's designed. 
what we do, we teach a skill called macros. And what macros do is they tell you, you know what, Karen, your personal body, because it's very personal, online macro calculators do not work because they're not personalized enough. But based on your current tendencies, your lifestyle, your age, your activity level, your current body is designed to run on this many carbs, fat, and protein. Once you know your personal quote unquote budget, we want to make nutritious choices the majority of the time. But the beauty of macros is there's no foods that aren't allowed. Like for me, I am a donut lover. If you put a gun to my head and said, choose a life of fitness or choose a life of donuts, peace out fitness, because I'm going the donut. I do not want to live a life that does not include donuts. Now, am I going to eat them every day? No, they're not the most nutritious foods. They don't have a lot of vitamins and minerals. But the key to this, the reason that macros are the only sustainable approach to nutrition that I believe in is because there's no restriction. I can choose to spend, quote unquote, spend some of my carbs and fat on a donut and I didn't ruin my diet. I'm still losing weight. I'm still hitting my goals. I'm understanding it's not the most nutritious choice, but I'm taking that restriction part out. And when we do that, we step into the power of choice. And when we're living from a place of choice, not restriction, we literally never go on a diet again and we make it a totally sustainable lifestyle. Something you were saying then is the personal bit about it being tailored to us personally, because I know the diets I've tried have generally not been to lose weight. They've been more a health thing. Go on the paleo diet, try the keto diet, do intimate fasting, that kind of thing. Don't eat meat. (laughs) That didn't work for me personally. And that's a really good point because Each of us is individual and each of us at our different times of life, like what I could eat 10 years ago, like I was saying, is completely different to now. How do you work that out? When you were saying about the online macro calculators, I really don't know what you're talking about there. What is that? Talk to me about that. (laughs) Yeah, that's such a great question. So there's kind of two schools of people. When I teach people about macros, there are people that have never heard of it before. And there are people that are like, oh, I've tried it and it was awful. And my answer to the people who say I've tried it of awful is that the way that it was done with them, I'm going to purposely use the word incorrectly. So let me, I'll back up and give you a little macros 101 lesson, and then I'll answer your question directly about it, it being very personalized. So when I'm saying macros, there are three nutrients of which our bodies need the most. That's why you hear me talking about carbs, fat, and protein. Those are the three nutrients of which we need the most. So they're called macronutrients or macros. So what we do is we work with you one-to-one and figure out based on you as an individual, what does your body need? How many carbs does your body need? How much fat and protein does your body need? Now, there are online calculators. If you Google free online macro calculator, you will find hundreds of them. If you go to most coaches, they'll tell you, here's a formula that you should use. Here's a percentage that you should use. And to me, that is never going to be sustainable because what happens is, let's say that I were to take a look at you personally. I were to look at how you tend to eat right now. We were to get under the hood and get an idea of how you eat in a day right now. What's breakfast look like? What do snacks look like? If I looked at how you tend to eat, then I looked at your lifestyle, your preferences, your activity level, your height, your weight, your age, all of these factors. If I were to just hand you some goal numbers, I use Joe Schmo online calculator and I say, here, you go eat this much protein. But let's say you're used to eating on a scale of one to 10, you're used to eating a two for protein. And this online macro calculator has you eating a 10, right? In no world are you going to increase your protein intake that much overnight and stick with it. It's too much change all at once. So the way that we approach macros is so different than the industry norm because it's so personalized. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to figure out how you specifically tend to eat. We're going to call that point A. What is your body used to? From there, we're absolutely going to figure out some goals, but those goals are not point B, they're point C. What we're going to do is we're going to take you by the hand and we're going to slowly walk your body from point A to point C. Because it's the difference between if I wanted to fill up a bucket of water, I can either do it a drop at a time and it's going to be slow and gradual and nothing's going to splash and it's going to be beautiful. Or I can aim a fire truck hose at it And the bucket's going to go flying and nothing's going to last because it's too much all at once. And so when people use these online macro calculators, it has nothing to do with them as a human. It's some generic pumped out number and it's too much change at once. So the key to macros is number one, 
learning what your body needs. And then number two, making sure that we're getting there in a very slow, personalized way. So we're not making drastic change. How do you calculate that? How would you know what are the right macros for me personally? It's more of an in-depth, there's some math involved. So what we do within our program is if you signed up for my 12 week program, you'd be paired with a coach. And the first thing we have you do is for five days, we have you eat the same way you normally eat. So try not to be on good behavior. Don't do a major life overhaul. We're not switching to chicken and vegetables. That defeats the purpose, right? Just for five days, you're going to eat as you normally eat, but you're going to input your app, your food into an app. It doesn't have to be perfect. W- what we're looking for is that point A. I want to see how you personally tend to eat and what your body's used to. Then there is a formula that we use. So based on Again, you personally, your age, your height, your weight, your activity level, we're going to use a formula to figure out that point C. What most people do though, is they're going to call point C your nutrition plan. They're going to go, here you go. I used a formula. Here are your numbers. And again, that's not going to last. So the difference is once we know point A and point C, we use what we call the bridge. We're going to take you by the hand and slowly like that drop in the water, we're going to walk your body from point A to point C. Right now, if your body's used to eating 40 grams of protein a day and your goal is 100 grams of protein a day, we're going to start at 45. And over time, we're going to bump you up to 50. Then we're going to bump you to 55. We're not going to jump from 40 to 100 overnight. So it becomes a very personalized process so we can keep an eye on you and your body and see how it's reacting. And the beautiful part of this is not only do you lose weight, not only do you get healthy, but we're retraining your metabolism to be on fire. And this works whether you're premenopausal or post because it's these slow baby steps. We're retraining your metabolism as we go. What impact does menopause have on that, the macro requirements and the changes in your body? What impacts have you seen from your clients that have happened? I think the biggest thing with menopause specifically, whether we're talking about metabolism or hormones, those are two really big topics we talk about with women who are on the brink of menopause, in menopause or postmenopausal. The thing with both of those, metabolism and hormones, is that most people go about it backwards. So most people say, oh, I hit menopause. This is a death sentence for my metabolism. Let me just keep eating less right? That's what diet culture has taught us. Oh, I'm in menopause. My metabolism slowed down. I'll just cut back on calories. So then we have women coming to us who are eating 900 calories a day, literally starving their body, and they're still not losing weight. And the answer is, of course, you're not losing weight. Because if we think about this biologically, your body now thinks it's starving. And from a survival standpoint, if your body thinks it's starving, it is not going to release weight. It needs to hold on to whatever it has so it can last as long as it can. So to answer your question, when we start doing this with women who are in menopause, the process is the same. What I need to know first is what's going on under the hood. And more times than not, you'd be shocked how many women are under eating. So our job becomes, again, the drop in the bucket becomes so important because we're going to slowly, and this becomes a mind game, we're just going to slowly raise their calories. And when we tell women that, they're like, you're going to get me to eat more food and you're going to tell me I'm going to lose weight. And the answer is absolutely, because if if that were true, if all you had to do was cut calories, you'd be skin and bones at 900 calories. But it's when we get your body to trust you, to trust that I'm going to fuel you the way you're meant to be fueled. That's where it starts to release. So we've watched women go from 900 calories a day in menopause to 1600 calories a day and lose 35 pounds and keep it off. And the other part of this conversation is the hormone part. To your point, it is 100% true that as we go through menopause, our hormones start to change. We're designed that way. We're supposed to. But again, most people go about this backwards. They say, oh, I hit menopause. My hormones must be out of whack. Let me just start popping pills. And we have no idea why we're taking these pills, right? We just say, this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm in menopause now. And the reality is the majority of hormone imbalances will balance themselves out with proper nutrition. Now, there is a time to supplement, but if we think about what that word means, supplement means to add to. So if we dive in the deep end and said, oh, it's menopause time, let me start popping pills. What are we supplementing? What are we adding to? We have no idea, right? We need to know where your body is, where it wants to be, and then we can supplement. We can add to the gap, but we can't do that work until our nutrition's in check. 
So what happens more often than not, again, when women are premenopausal or post is they come to us, they say, I think my hormones are out of whack. Should I take supplements? And the answer is first and foremost, let's get your nutrition in check because by doing that, we're going to even out most of those hormonal imbalances. And at that point, we can see if there's still a gap and then we can supplement as needed. So when I talk about how personalized this is to answer your question, there are some things that menopause is absolutely going to affect. Your hormones are going to change. The roller coaster that you've been on nutritionally has just been going on so much longer that there's a lack of trust. So our metabolism slows down. And the beautiful news is that all of this is retrainable and it all happens through nutrition first and foremost. Okay. How does nutrition impact the symptoms of menopause in your experience? Oh my goodness. I love this question. They are so beyond what you would expect, right? What, and I, I will tell you, when I first started my company, I was at an age where menopause wasn't even a blink on my radar, which is not the case for me personally anymore. So when I first got into it, I was like, oh, cool. Like I get to help people increase their energy. I get to help people lose weight and step into their power. And the longer I did this, and now as I'm at that age as well, the amount of life-changing moments that we hear about, I'm just like, that is not something that, that younger Rachel would have even thought about. Because when we think of the typical symptoms like hot flashes and trouble sleeping and hormonal up and downs, right? These are things that become night and day. We have had people come to us who say, Rachel, I have not slept through the night since I was premenopausal. And my sleep now, I'm a different person, right? Hot flashes are something they may never totally go away. But again, it's one of those things that affect people's lives. They're like, I have to stop what I'm doing. I can't sleep through the night because I get so hot and then so cold from sweating. And they're like, if it was at a 10 before, I'm at like a two right now. So again, part of this is natural. Part of it's supposed to happen. But what we can do is we can severely lessen those symptoms. And if you're someone who's premenopausal, catching this, nipping it in the bud, like catching it before it starts, you are setting yourself up to sail through menopause. A lot of women that work with us who are postmenopausal, they're celebrating because they're unleashing their life at a later age, but they're also kicking themselves saying, man, if I had done this before menopause hit, this would have been a very different experience. So they always say the best time to start was 20 years ago. The second best time to start is right now. So <laughs> depending if you're premenopausal, you were setting yourself up for success. If you're in the thick of it, you're going to minimize the, the symptoms you're feeling. And if you're postmenopausal, we can't go back in time and undo anything, but we can start to take those steps now so that you have the increased energy and the fired up metabolism. On a completely different tangent, how do you see this as tying in with the whole body image thing, the women's body image? Where does that, because when I'm going back to the neuroscience of things here, we as women, we're bombarded all the time with you've got to lose weight, you've got to look like this, you've got to do this. And that's the undercurrent that goes through all of this training and ultimately leads to, just to tie in with what you were saying, because this is where my mind was going off as you were saying it, by the time we get to menopause, our eating habits aren't necessarily the best because we've had all of this stuff and then we go into the self-loathing and we're overeating the wrong things and all the rest of it. How does this all, because that's a massive thing to deal with, isn't it? it? Like the psychology of how we look at ourselves. Talk to me about that side of things. Absolutely. One of my favorite jokes, but it's not even a joke, is nobody is walking around life wearing a t-shirt that says, I lost 20 pounds or wearing a t-shirt that says, I weigh X, Y, and Z, right? Everything we do in life is for a feeling. What my running joke is that we're all glorified drug addicts because every decision we're making in life is we're searching for a dopamine hit. I use the analogy of you come to me and say, Rachel, I want to be really rich. And I ask you why, do you want to log into your bank account and just see a bunch of zeros? Or do you want the feeling that brings the security, the safety, the being able to take care of your family and friends, right? And what I do in the health and fitness industry has nothing to do with weight loss. The weight loss, it's beautiful. It's math, it's science, it's biology. If you follow the plan, it will work. There's no question there. But what I really do, the reason my 12 week program is called Ignite. And the reason it's called Ignite is because especially as women, as we age, 
we have spent decade upon decade giving and taking care of others and putting our own needs and our own health to the side so that we can be good moms or good teachers or good nurses or good grandparents, whatever it is. And then we hit this stage of life and we're like, everyone's taken care of, but I feel awful. My energy's awful. I don't feel comfortable in my skin. I look in the mirror. I don't recognize myself. I feel like my metabolism is just shot. And to me, this is all about energy. Everything that I teach is about energy. I'm going to nerd out for a little bit because I'm, I'm a big quantum physics nerd. There is a rule of science that says when it comes to energy, like attracts like. Meaning, I'm going to go back to my music days for a second. In music, there's something called a tuning fork, which is a little piece of metal. When you hit it, it makes, off, it makes a sound. Depending how thick or thin the piece of metal is, it produces a different note. So in the music world, if I'm holding an A tuning fork, and I'm in a room full of tuning forks. There's A, B, C sharp, and D. Okay, if I hit my A tuning fork, the rest of the tuning forks are not going to go off because I didn't touch them. Except, and this is such a nerdy, fun science fact, any other A tuning forks in that room are going to sound without being touched. And the reason is sound is moving energy. The energy wave is like attracts. So the A tuning fork I'm holding is attracting the vibration of the other A's. And the reason that I tell this little nerdy science fact is because atoms, which we all know if we remember in elementary school, right? Atoms are the building block of everything in the world. You're made of atoms, I'm made of atoms, the chair I'm sitting on is made of atoms. But an atom is 99.999% energy. It has all the stuff we learned about in school, protons, neutrons, electrons, but it's mostly energy, which means we as humans are vibrating energy. And when we understand this fact of science, the nerdy music analogy here of like attracts like, the energy we put out in the world is literally what we're attracting back. I give you that, that little lesson in quantum physics because to me, yes, weight loss is important. Our health is important. But everything we do to me is about energy because when we're walking around in this world and we're shrunken down in our skin and we're saying, oh, I don't want anyone to look at me. My jeans feel tight. I sniffed pizza last night and now I feel like I gained five pounds. What kind of vibration are we putting into the world? And worse, what kind of vibration are we attracting back? But when we start to do this work and we take control of our nutrition and our energy skyrockets and we're standing in our power and we're comfortable in our skin, we are literally vibrating at a higher frequency. And because quantum physics says that with energy, like attracts, we watch women go through our program and yeah, they lose the 30 pounds, but more importantly, they start to leave unhealthy relationships, attract partners to their dreams, get into the career that they've always wanted to start businesses. And it's not because suddenly they look like a bombshell and they're walking through society more confidently because of their physical looks. It's because they are literally vibrating at a higher frequency and they're attracting back a different life. So to me, when we talk about body positivity, we can stand in front of the mirror all day long and beat our chest and say, I am woman, hear me roar. But if we still feel like garbage, that's not going to do anything. It's when we start taking the steps to increase our physical energy, to do the neuroscience, to rewire our brains, we literally start vibrating at a higher level. And to me, that's what all of this is actually about. It's really fascinating when you're saying all that because I'm looking at the traditional diet industry and they say that's what they're selling, but they're really not because it doesn't correspond with the way our minds work, does it? Yeah, all of these, I call it, if you ever see the movie, The Wizard of Oz, right? There's the big, powerful, almighty Oz, and then they pull back the curtain and they're like, what, this is it? That to me is the diet industry. Like it has become so, these shake systems, these point systems, these frozen meals, it does not have to be that complicated. So my running joke in this industry is I have the worst sales pitch in the world because you only need me once. You give me 12 weeks, I'm going to pull back that veil. I'm going to show you how this actually works. And at the end of 12 weeks, you don't need me or anyone else because it is, the, the diet industry is multi-billions of dollars of really good marketing BS and I don't say that to speak ill of anyone, but that's what it is. All these shake systems and point systems are doing is they're putting a veil over, over a skill so that you don't understand how it works. And it's the old idiom about teach a woman to fish versus give her a fish, right? If you don't understand how the shake system or point systems works, yeah, it'll work as long as you're on it. 
But as most of us have experienced, what happens when you go off of it? What the key to this is, the key to never dieting again, the key to actually raising your vibration and living the life of your dreams is by taking control. And the only way to take control of something is to understand how it works to get educated. And to me, that, that is the holy grail because we're not just talking about getting educated in how to surf. We're talking about getting educated in your health, how to be confident in your skin, how to increase your energy, how to literally raise your vibration. And in my opinion, there's nothing more important in life than that. It's really fascinating as you're talking because I'm going, ah, this isn't actually about your weight. It's not about anything. It's actually about stepping into your I don't want to say the best you because that's so overused by the marketing people that you're talking about. But it, it's almost like, hey, if you're not actually taking care of yourself, if you don't educate yourself in a way, it's disempowering on the most basic level. It's giving away your power at the most basic level. This is the thing we need to do in order to do anything else. Is, is that what you're saying? That's what I'm hearing. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. When I say to people, your energy is the most important thing you have. When they say, no, Rachel, my kids are my most important thing I have. My answer is exactly because the life you're attracting back. And again, this is not what people talk about the, the law of attraction. They think it's like rainbows and glitter and unicorns. This is quantum physics. The life you are attracting back for your family is based on the vibration you're putting out. So if your kids are the most important thing in the world for you, the most important work you can be doing is this work to raise your vibration. And that has to start with your physical health because now the life you're attracting back from them looks very different. And then we can go on a whole rant. People focus so much on generational wealth, but let's talk about generational health, the habits that we're passing down to our kids. I don't think there's anything more important than this work here. And as you said, it has nothing to do with weight loss. We have a member in our Ignite program right now. She just turned 70 last week, seven zero. And she left me a message the other day crying. And she said, Rachel, it's 70 years old. I just got my life back. So of course I start crying listening to this because this is why I do what I do. And she's only been doing this a few weeks. She's lost a few pounds, but she hasn't hit her weight loss goal. She's not 10, 10 pant sizes smaller within these few weeks. But what happens immediately is exactly as you said, you start stepping into your power. You start living your most un unleashed aligned life. And those are steps that are going to happen weeks, months before the noticeable weight loss. Weight loss is math and science. It works and it's a slow, tedious process, but raising your energy, raising your vibration, stepping into your power, those things start to happen immediately just through the act of taking control. So I love how you just put it like, it's not about the weight loss. We always tell people weight loss is a fun byproduct. When you follow the program, you will lose weight, but what you're going to eventually learn is you're not even going to care about that part because it's going to be such a given. It's this unleashing of your life. That's again, this is why it's called, we call it ignite. It's relighting that spark and igniting your life. And there's absolutely nothing more important in my opinion. Um, <laughs> tell people how they can get in touch with you and give me some more details about the programs that you offer too. Absolutely. So the best way to get in touch with me and find out about our, our programs, our website, mindstrongfitness.com. You can see case study after case study, pre-menopausal, post-menopausal. It's just our homepage is splattered with before and after pictures. There's information on our programs, exactly what we teach and how. So again, that's mindstrongfitness.com. As you mentioned in the beginning, I do have my own podcast. So if you're listening to this as a podcast person, my podcast is called Becoming Mindstrong. And I have a book, a best-selling book on Amazon called Becoming Mindstrong, The Truth About Health, Fitness, and the BS That's Holding You Back. Oh, thank you so much. Is there anything else you want to share with people? Have we covered everything? Yeah, the last thing I'll say is one of the big, we talked a lot about neuroscience and psychology today. And sometimes people ask me, like, if there's one tip that you can give me today, like your most transformative tip, what would it be? And it, it's a mindset thing. It's not even an action step. It's that the diet industry has, I'm going to use the word brainwashed, has brainwashed us to believe that health and fitness are all in, all out. Either I'm going to the gym four days a week, or I missed a workout and now I have to start again next Monday. 
or I have to eat completely clean, nothing but chicken and rice and vegetables. And oh man, I had a donut. Now I've ruined my diet and I have to start again next Monday. And to me, the biggest game changer in this is when we stop thinking all in, all out, black or white. When we talk about mindset training and neuroscience, it's the understanding, number one, that there is a way to do this. In my opinion, the only way to make this sustainable, where you learn to eat those less nutritious, more fun foods now and then, and still hit your goals. But even if you're not at a point where you're ready to learn that skill, just the simple mindset switch of, you know what? I only fail at this when I stop. So if I said I was going to work out four days this week and I only got there one, cool. I still got a workout in and I get to start again, not next Monday, but tomorrow, right? If I said I was going to eat healthier this week and then I went into the workroom at, at work and I had a donut, I don't have to wait till next Monday. I can enjoy the donut. I can say, you know what? Maybe tomorrow I need to pack some snacks so I don't do this again and I don't feel as bad about it. And then I get back on the next day. And the sooner we can get out of this black, white, all in, all out mindset, I call it healing your relationship with food. And that is the number one mindset switch that I like to just plant that seed for people, no matter what they go on to do with nutrition next. Thank you so much. This has been great. I've really enjoyed listening to all of this stuff because it, it casts a whole different picture on everything. Thank you so much for having me. I love chatting with you. This was fantastic. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. And don't forget, if you've been thinking how great it would be to have your own podcast so that you can interview guests and speak to people about the topics that you're interested in personally, head on over to speakuppodcasting.com to find out just how easy and cheap it is for you to start podcasting. There's a download on how to start a podcast for free waiting there for you. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next time.